We're here with Gabriel Carrer, mm -hmm. the director from Death on Scenic Drive, which is playing on the Hasline Film Festival. Um, I think it's already your second film on this film festival. Two years ago you were here, or you were not here, but your film was played, The Demolisher. Yeah, unfortunately I couldn't be here uh, two years ago when The Demolisher played here. I wish I could have been. Um, and uh, yeah, this year I'm finally here in this beautiful city at Hardline and it's been an amazing experience. Everyone is amazing flow and the films so far that we've been watching are fantastic. Okay, so you're having a good time? Oh, it's inspiration. a fantastic time, yeah. Um, for the ones who see the interview and haven't seen the film because it's uh, gonna be played on YouTube afterwards, and I don't want to give anything away, maybe in your own word, what would you say the film is about? Uh, the film can be about many things. It's going to be interesting to see what people think it's about. Uh, I mean, my movies are pretty divisive, where I notice audiences, 60%, 70% of people don't like them at all. Mm -hmm. And then I get the 30% who love them. And I, I, I find that really interesting. Um, so the film is about a, basically a woman uh, driven into madness alone in isolation and uh, she transforms into death uh, literally and metaphorically throughout the film and uh, that's kind of her journey throughout it that's the basic that's the basic plot yeah and um, you, you're here on the festival with your friends um, yep. Joe Archibald is yep. also here and I, I read that and he also told me that you, um, you know each other since a long time you're all um, we went to high school together. We, we've known each other since we were 14. We're 36 now and we made our first film together. Before we started making movies, uh, we were in a band together. Uh, he was the drummer. I was the DJ. It was uh, during the era of like Korn, Limp Bizkit, a lot of new metal. I still like that music. I still think it's cool. Um, so him and I have a interesting relationship. <laughs> And so. sometimes you also collaborate on, on movies. I think the movie Kill you co-directed. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, that was back in 2000. That was at, we directed our first movie we ever did together, um, called Desperate Souls. Uh -huh. And then we directed a movie after that called Kill yeah. together. And then after that, we just um, went on and made our own movies. But we support each other, so we make totally different movie. Like we still make stuff that's horror and stuff, I guess you could say it's horror, but uh, very different types of horror films. Yeah. But it's nice that we have each other's backs, you know, and we're at that point in our lives where we're not even competing because we're just, it's like we're just, <laughs> it's awesome, it's a good thing. So you both make horror movies, but you make different movies, so yeah, you, you, I guess you kind of, when you hang out so much, you kind of influence, but I also recognize this when I watched uh, Chats, Archibald movies, and then I watched the uh, that on Scenic Drive, I have the feeling that you have a very own approach that, uh, yeah, you can see a, a lot of difference um, to, to the films uh, you can chat made. And I, I would say your films are way slower and you have another focus on, on the devices you use. Uh, I especially um, um, discovered a lot that you're working with lights and colors. What, would you say about that? Yeah, you, you nailed it actually. Uh, after The Demolisher, I was just exhaust, exhausted because it, it was just a bigger budget film. Lots of crew, lots of people, and uh, um, I s not self finance, but I get private investors to involve my money. I don't work with the studio, so it's always harder for me to find money to make a movie, and I'm not going to sit around and wait. So I needed to make something ASAP because my I was losing it, I was losing my mind. Um, and I wanted to try some things with lights and color. So me and a very small crew, we went and shot Death on Scenic Drive in seven days. Uh, we had some lights and we just tried things with lighting, color, like through textures and stuff. And Because you learn that, right? Every movie you do, uh, you learn. No matter, you make 50 movies, you're still going to be learning. And filmmaking is like an art. It's just like a sport. You like when you want to get buffed and beefed up, you go to the gym and you work out. Mm -hmm. You have to do that. Filmmaking is the same thing. So I wasn't going to sit around for three years, wait, like wait around for money to come in. Um, so I think that's where my films are different. Where uh, I, uh, I'm 
more, I, it's hard to explain. Like I know Ch Chad Sonera, he's with a studio and everything, so there's certain mandates that he has to meet and certain things he has to do with his films. Um, my films, like I, I have no one telling me what to do, so I'm able to kind of go off and not worry so much about sales or the financial aspects of stuff with with my films. I can kind of do whatever the fuck I want. Um, but that also has implications and problems too because you don't have people looking down at you going, oh, like, you know, that's not gonna work. Like, I only find out when the movie's edited, you know? But to me, that's that's part of the process. And I think once you tell audiences that, they look at, they look at your work differently too. They look at your movie not as, I'm gonna sit down and pay 10 bucks, I wanna get entertained, you know? That's not the films that I make. Mm -hmm. um, I make films for the background. Yes, I, I would. All, well, I don't know if it's too forward leap, but um, yeah, they 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 are horror. They are horror, but they also get a, a little a little bit of art house touch. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. I think that's where just being a filmmaker, just practicing, you know, and encouraging that with movies, because I feel like a lot of people get caught up on popularity and. Um, trying to make money and becoming the next, you know, movie, big movie thing. Just go out and practice, you know, and if some festivals pick it up and play it, that's cool, you know. Like, then other people, other filmmakers in the audience might see an idea in the film. Like I, last night I saw Compulsion. I loved it. And there's a few ideas in Compulsion. As a filmmaker watching it, I was like, oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try that in my next movie. Are there um, kind of traditions you, you want to connect like uh, when, when I read about your movie I, I read uh, references to some people called it a chayu for example is that uh, what you uh, a what? a chayu uh, the Italian slashes from the oh Jalo? oh yeah 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 I do love Jalo films <laughs> like Dario Argento uh, yes the bird, exactly uh, crystal crystal oh, I can't say that one crystal plumage uh huh yeah that one uh, example. I'm getting that word mixed up I know but yeah um, I don't know. I don't intentionally um, go out and do it. I think I uh, I do like uh, movies that breathe. So when you set up a shot, it's like a painting, like a photograph, mm -hmm. and then you have your performers act in that photograph. You don't tell them, oh, the camera's going to be here after. You just let them go through the whole frame. And then as a director, if they got everything done in that frame, you move on to the next scene. If not, then you can do. So that's where I work differently, where it might be slower sometimes because, you know, and maybe that's similar to what, just that wide aspect, you know. Um, I also know for films, for sales and commercial, you always have to have medium close-ups of your stars, your cast and actors. So there's lots of cuts and making sure you punch in to show the actor's face. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I feel like on the big screen, it's always nicer to see a wider frame because then you see, you know, that's what I've noticed with at least European cinema, German, France, mm -hmm. Italy, a yeah. lot of wide landscapes and stuff in their films. So. And um, besides the cinematography, um, I think an important role also is, is the sound yeah. in your films, the so music important. as well as the sound yeah. itself. What about that? I'm just a huge music fan. I have vinyl, turntables, CDs. Mm -hmm. yes, you said you were a DJ? Yeah, I used to be a DJ. So uh, I have a lot of friends who are musicians. I have a lot of friends who are DJs over here in Europe. And I love soundtracks and movies. I'll buy them on vinyl and listen to them and old scores. And you, people don't realize that, uh, like, you should have, a, you, you should know your sound before you even make your film. Um, some people just make movies and then they get a composer at the end and put the music to it. Um, with The Demolisher and with Death on Scenic, I had the composer, um, Stacy, Starsky, sorry, Starsky, um, Partage, he read the script and he came on set and watched us film the movie, then he'd leave and go make music. Uh, it wasn't, you know, and then when we edited the film, we took his music and just tried to put it in and then worked on that instead of just going, here's the movie, add the music, you know, it's, what's that? That's not part of the process. 
you know, get them from the script, you know, with the demolisher, Glenn from the UK, he, um, I sent him the script and he started making music from the script, reading it, you know, it's way better. <laughs> That's, that's one of well, at least in my opinion, right? And the soundtrack <laughs> is one of the main things that uh, stick in my mind when I watch your movie. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like that very oh, much. Good. And it I'll tell Starsky that. I'd like to hear that. To the atmosphere, to the overall atmosphere. Because yeah. like I said earlier, well, it's very slow. It's not, there's not much dialogue. And, uh, yeah, so that's the thing too. Um, when you're on a slow budget, tight budget, minimal time, you can't have a lot of talking. So got to be, make your score at least interesting. <laughs> um, what are your next projects? So I, I've seen um, in context of the Hardline Festival, the Demo Leisure and um, Stefan Scenic Drive, and for me they yeah. share um, kind of same melancholic atmosphere. Um, um, how probably. Go they, on. Gonna go on. I mean, I look at movies like music because I'm such a music fan, and I always consider the Demolisher like a full-length album. You know, you have a band, oh. and this is their full album. That's, That's the Demolisher. Death on Scenic Drive is like an EP, like a single. There's like four songs, right? That's what Death on Scenic Drive was to me. The next movie I do will be like a full album again. And uh, I have three movies in the work, because you always have to have like three. It's the, the rule of the tripod, right? Three legs. Um, one movie that you can do with no money. You can go out and shoot next week, you know, where well, you need money, but you don't need a ton. Then your second movie you have, you have a little bit of money. Then the third movie should be money that you don't even have access to. So um, I'm waiting to see the money, but I'm already getting like crazy. And the movie that I can do with no money is called Diamond, Diamond Eyes. And it's uh, about this female uh, method actress from the big city. She, uh, she doesn't get this uh, role in a movie she wanted, so she moves and uh, she goes and stays in a motel, just like in the middle of nowhere. And in this motel, she meets this uh, man in the other room, and he's a debt collector. So he goes to uh, people who owe other people money and, or tries to get the money out of them. But he's also a hypnotist. So he hypnotizes her, and uh, she goes with him on this like, violent uh, doomsday rampage collecting money from people who owe him and other people money and she's an actress so she's method acting but or is she hypnotized I don't know so it's 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 gonna be really weird like it's gonna be lots of cuts and fast-paced now <laughs> it's gonna be different than the lot the last two um, will it star Wright Barrett again? Because he plays. At you know least what? In the, in it, the last it, two I've movies. talked to him, and uh, he. The thing with Wright, he loves crazy roles, uh, and he's such a great actor that the, the more um, freedom you give, uh, the more he goes nuts with it. So him as the hypnotist debt debt collector, yeah, I've talked to him. And he's on board with it. So it's just a matter of uh, our schedule, like when we can do it. Like, probably be like next summer uh, and he's gonna go I told him to go nuts and so shave his head and just like go nuts and it's gonna be shot in, in near, near Guelph or in Ontario again? Uh, Toronto it'll be area. in the Toronto area southern Ontario for sure on the outskirts of the city so it has like a desolate ghost town vibe yeah so it should be crazy if we can pull it off <laughs> Okay, is there anything else you have the feeling should be said about death on scenic? Um, no, it's just, you know, it's a, a very divisive film and, you know, sometimes you make movies that uh, are not necessarily for audiences. Um, I'm a huge movie fan and I like movies that I can put on in the background and um, while I work at the computer or desk and you look up once in a while and you see it and you look down. and um, That's kind of what Death on Scenic Drive is, it's kind of a continuation with the mood and the, the tone of the demolisher, but it's kind of like the end of it. So there's, yeah, I, interesting to hear what people think. The world premiere, I have no idea what an audience, I don't even know what it's going to look like on the big screen. Uh, wh so. What's the schedule for the film? Are there any other festivals or will it appear uh, on DVD soon? Uh, it, it did get picked up, but I'm trying to squeeze in enough festivals before 
gets online, leaked or whatever. So it's playing here, and then uh, Monday we're flying to Sweden uh, mm -hmm. for Lund, Lund okay. Fantastic Fest, and then we're going to Prague, and then uh, I have to go to Mexico to Ferratum. Oh, it's gonna be crazy, and then uh, up back to Canada for another one, and then I think October it's coming out. Like late October, last week of October, it'll be coming out on iTunes and stuff already. Like they okay. picked it up quick, and so it's gonna be available for everybody very soon. Very soon, by the end of this year, by October, end of October. Yeah. Okay, so far for me. Um, cool. Thank you very much thank for you. visiting us. It was an honor talking yeah. meeting you guys. And I guess I will see you around for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Cool.